Good morning and welcome to Great Games Computer Learning Videos. This is the second video in the Making Games with Visual Basic series. Today we will be discussing Tutorial 2, Making the Darts Game. To begin with, let's launch Visual Studio. Once we launch Visual Studio, we should have a screen that looks a little bit like mine. I'm going to click on New Project. Um, with the New Project dialog box, make sure that you're on Visual Basic, that you're on Windows Form application. I'm going to call this here Darts VB. So Darts underscore VB, um, representing Visual Basic. And make sure that you're in the right folder that you want to save your projects in. Once you have that information loaded in there, you can click OK. And very shortly, you should see your window open up. <clears throat> now, with this particular project, I'm going to put this window or form on a particular size. So over here, where I have the size area, I'm going to put 518, comma, and 567. I press enter and it should accept that. Okay, once we have the form sized, we're going to go ahead and do a couple more things real quick. I want this thing uh, to be opening up in the center of the screen. So under start position in the properties box, I'm going to make sure that I select center screen. Okay, and I also want to put a title on this. So up here at the top where we have our form title bar, I'm going to put the text of this here at darts and then I'm just going to put a hyphen and then um, I'll just go ahead and put my uh, company here. And if you want to put your name there that's fine. Um, that way at least it's identified uh, in some way. So I have darts, great games. <clears throat> Alright, next thing I want to do is put some uh, buttons on here. So if I come over here in my toolbox, I should be able to find um, a button up towards the top. It's under the common controls. Just double click it. Let's double click it again and one more time. So that way we have three buttons up here. We're going to need three buttons for this project. I'm just going to select them all and you can do that just by drawing a box around them. Just click and drag. You can go from the top right or top left, doesn't matter or you can go from the bottom and up. Uh, once you've selected them, you should be able to look for the, um, the, the plus crosshair and you can just select it and drag it where you want. Okay, in the properties box, I'm gonna put the size of these here um, at 150 by 40. So 150 <clears throat> comma 40. And with them still selected, I'm gonna go up to font I'm going to put this font on a larger font that we can easily see. So maybe something like an 18 point bold. Okay. Once you have those on there, let's take this first one, drag it down to the bottom right. The second one down right next to it, it should kind of lock in place. And the third one, and kind of lock that in place. Now, if you notice, we have a little bit of a gap on the left side. So I'm going to select all three of these, and just using my left arrow key, I'm going to bump it over until it looks kind of centered. I'm not going to be too precise, but just so it looks about the same on the left as it does on the right side. And if you're not quite there, you can bump it over a little bit farther. <clears throat> okay, now the button on the far left over here is going to be our reset button. So we're going to select it. Go over to your properties area. Um, if you scroll to the top of the properties list, you should be able to sort these either alphabetically or categorically. I like to sort alphabetically because it's easy to find things alphabetically. And I'm going to go up to the very top to a property called name. All of the buttons will begin with BTN and then usually the name of whatever the button is going to be. And this is going to be our reset button. So I'm going to put reset. Our second button over, I'm going to click on it. It's going to be BTN 
and we're going to call this one play and our third button will be our exit button so btn exit <clears throat> now it's nice to have these things named because in the program you're going to have to interface or work with them but a user looks at these here and this doesn't mean anything to them button one button two and button three so we're going to change the actual text on these if I click on the first one now I'm going to scroll down from name and I should see a property called text okay the text deals with the actual text on the buttons this first one is going to be our reset button so I'll type reset our second one is our play button so I will put play and our last one is our exit button so it should look something like that make sure that you have all the text changed so it says reset play and exit and if you click on any one of these and go up to the name property you should find that it's BTN reset BTN play and BTN exit okay all right the next uh, objects we need to add to this particular window or form is uh, some labels so I'm going to go over here to this label property double click it again again and one more time so I have four of them okay now I'm going to select them all and if you want to you can drag them down to the center so we can work on them and then we'll locate these in just a moment the first thing I want to do in the properties area is I want to go over to the auto size and set it on false okay with it on false it allows me uh, the designer to be able to create the size I want if I leave that on true then the program wants to take over and it automatically sizes it for you the problem with that is sometimes the uh, program doesn't know what looks best not at least as far as what a designer knows so I'm going to put this on false and I'm going to scroll down to the size area and we're going to put the size of these at 120 by 40 okay so that's 120 comma 40 enter make sure you press enter to accept these and then just down a little bit from the size we see the text area then the text align in the text align we're going to click that box open click on the center this is centering horizontally and vertically inside this text box and just click on that center alignment there okay so we have that aligned <clears throat> now I want to change the font so if you go back up to font we're going to put this on the same size that we did for the buttons so we had an 18 point bold okay I'm not going to actually change the font name at this point you can if you want but I'm just going to change it so it's easier to read what's on there okay with those size like they are we're going to take this number four doesn't matter where you put it I'm just going to put it up in the upper right you'll see it kind of lock in place up there we'll take number three we're going to put it just below okay it should lock just below there we'll take number two in the upper left and number one right underneath that okay all right so we should have those labels all in place I'm going to change the font color of these here to white so I'll select all four of them again just by dragging a box over them okay and over here in the font color or actually below the font it's called four color I'm going to change that to a light color like white okay if you want to go with a different color that's up to you but I'm going to make my black uh, background on my dart game uh, black so as I select the form now I've deselected these labels up here I've selected the form I'm going to go to the back color and for the back color I want to change these to black okay that way I've got a dark background I've got my light text where I can see on the form plus I have my uh, gray buttons down at the bottom with my black text so everything is very easily read at this point now we need to change the text on these here the top ones are going to be used for scoring so I'm going to click on the top one um, 
and I'm going to change this to a zero. Make sure it's a zero and not the letter O. There is a difference between a zero and an O. So I'm putting that at zero because that's going to start off with zero. And my text for this upper one on the right side is going to also be zero. Underneath the one on the left, we're going to put the text as hits. So that'll be the number of hits in the game. And the ones on the, actually the one on the right side is going to be misses. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, misses. Okay, so we have hits and misses. Uh, we have both of them zeroed out to begin with at zero. And we have basically the form laid out at this point. The next thing we need to do at this point is to start giving these objects some names. And the only ones that we actually have to name are those that are going to be changing through the game. For example, the hits and misses will never change. It's always just going to be a label that says hits. And this is always going to be a label that says misses. But up above, the score is definitely going to be changing. So I'm going to click on this first one that has the zero and scroll up to the name area. And we're going to call this LBL hits. Okay. I generally put the LBL in lowercase, the first letter of the next word in an uppercase letter, the uppercase H and then my ITS in lowercase. Okay, this one is gonna keep track of the misses. So we're gonna call this LBL misses. Okay, and then we've already named these down below, which should be BTN reset, BTN play, and BTN exit. All right, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run this thing just to kind of see what it looks like as a running project. So I click on the start. In just a moment, my program will load. It should come up in the center of the screen. I should have my title on the title bar, darts dash great games. Um, down below, I've got these buttons. They're not coded, so they do nothing at this point. But I should be able to click and see some kind of a flicker or something happening like they're ready for some coding. OK, also, I've got these up here. Nothing's coded, but Shortly, we'll get the code going and we'll be able to uh, keep our score here. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and exit by clicking on this red button here. Go back to the form. And the next thing we're going to do with this project is to start doing some of the coding. And usually when I do coding, I start with the easiest items first and work towards the more difficult. Um, it always makes more sense. It'll save you a lot of heartache later on as you're doing your own programs. Um, start with the easy and get that out of the way and then come back and get the more difficult coding uh, afterwards. So the easiest thing to code at this point is the exit button. So to do that we're just going to double click on exit. If it's properly named it should come up with your BTN exit here. If it comes up and it says button one or something else it probably wasn't properly named. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and put the exit code in here, which is just application dot exit. OK, and once we get that in there, we could try this program by running it again. And if you click on the exit button, now it should terminate or exit the program. OK, now while we're at this point, we need to declare some global variables that we're going to need for some upcoming uh, coding in just a moment. So I'm going to go up to the top into this public class form one area. Okay, in this area here is where we're going to declare some global variables. The first one I want to put in here is going to keep track of the hits in the game. So I'm going to put dim hits and I'm using a lowercase h here as integer because this is going to be keeping track of uh, the hits in the game and it is a whole number so it would be an integer at this point. Um, the next item I'm going to put dim and we're going to put misses and this is also going to be an integer a whole number and one last item we're going to put in here is going to be um, uh, total so dim 
total as integer. Okay, and if we need more uh, variables, we will add them. We can add them at any time, but uh, I know we're going to need these here as we get this game going, and we can see where we go and what we might need later as we get into the more complicated code. Okay, now I'm going to toggle back to the form, so I'm going to click on this tab. You notice you can actually toggle back and forth here between the code editor and also the form or design um, uh, window. So the next thing we're going to do, these other two buttons are probably equally as difficult, but I'm going to go ahead and do the reset button at this point. So let's go ahead and double click on that reset. And once we've double clicked it, we go into the area where we can code for the reset. If the reset button is properly named, we should see that it comes up with BTN reset. Okay. Now we're going to need to declare a few more variables here. Um, when we declare the variables inside the actual methods like this, they are local variables. If we declare them up at the top under the class area, they're called global variables. Um, we'll talk more about those in just a moment, but uh, just to let you know the difference between those. Now, in this area, <clears throat> the first one we need to declare is a, a graphics object. So I'm going to put dim g as graphics. Okay, and while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and initialize this with me.createGraphics. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and declare that and initialize it at the same line. And we're going to also create a pin here. So dim pin, this is going to be a black pin, so it's going to draw in black. We're going to declare it as a new pin. And we're going to set the color and the thickness. So the color is going to be black. And the thickness on this will be two pixels. Okay. So that takes care of the two local variables here. Um, once we've done that, we want to clean off the window. If we have been playing this game, it's going to draw and do things to it. Each time we play, or each time we click the reset button, I should say, we want it to clear it off. So let's go ahead and clear off that window. We're going to call me.refresh. Okay, and that should clear off the window and get ready for the next play. We also need to randomize um, this. So I'm going to go ahead and put randomize. <clears throat> okay, so we've got those items and then the next thing we need to do is make sure that we zero out the hits, misses, and total. Because if we've been playing the game, it could be accumulating score that we don't want to um, introduce into the next game. So we want to zero these out. So let's go ahead and put hits is equal to zero. Um, misses is equal to zero. And we're going to put total is equal to zero. Okay, so just kind of clearing out the form uh, using me.refresh. Uh, clearing out the variables from the previous game so we can start a new game and uh, then we're going to go ahead and update um, those labels on the form for the user so I'm going to say LBL hits dot text is equal to hits dot to string and let's go ahead and update the misses label too Okay, <clears throat> now after we've done that, we've cleared off the form, we've uh, zeroed out the variables, we've updated the labels so that the user sees that there's uh, no hits, no misses for the new game. Then we need to redraw or to draw the target uh, so that the user can kind of see what they're shooting these darts at. So we've already created the graphics object up here. Now we're going to start using it to draw this target. So I'm going to put g dot. I'm going to use a method called fillpy. And 
and then we're going to use a brush. So we put brushes dot, uh, the color is going to be yellow. We're going to put this at 50 comma 50 and we're going to have it 400 wide and 400 high. We're going to start it at zero which is the three o'clock position and we're going to have this draw an arc or a pie piece 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got something like that. Now, once we've drawn this one, uh, we could go ahead and run it right now to see what that looks like. So I click on reset, and you can see my yellow pie piece. It starts at, at, at 3 o'clock here, which is zero, and it's going 90 degrees. It has a, a point that, if you notice, this here is a full circle that goes all the way around. And up here, the circle is in like a square. If you can imagine the square being like this, okay? This square is at 50-50 up here. This is this 50-50 right here, okay? Um, so we have the, the circle st uh, in a box that's at 50-50. It's 400 wide by 400 high, okay? That's what the next two numbers are. And it's going to be starting at zero, which is the three o'clock position, and it go goes clockwise, so it's going to go 90 degrees here, and it ends down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these the next three arcs in here. Let me just exit out of that. And the easiest way to do it is move your mouse until it is over on the left side. It kind of points in the upper right direction. If you click that, it selects the entire line for you. Okay. Let me do that one more time for you. I'm going to move it over here, just in the margin area. My arrow is pointing to the upper right. I click and it selects the entire line. With that line selected, I'm going to press Control C to copy, Control V four times, and it will give me three additional copies plus the original copy. Now, the other ones, they're going to be alternating yellow, red, yellow, red. So let's change this one here to red, yellow, and then back to red again. Okay, so I've got my colors positioned right. They're all going to start at 50 50 because they're all in that one box. That circle is all in that one box that's up at 50 50. All 400 high, 400 wide, uh, 400 wide, I should say, first, and 400 high. And the thing I'm going to change now are the actual um, start and end um, uh, uh, points on the actual circle. So this one's going to start at zero, which is at three o'clock. It's going to go 90 degrees. Then I'm going to start the next one at 90 degrees, and it's going to go 90 degrees. Okay, starting at 90 degrees, which is six o'clock, and it's going to go 90 degrees. Then I'm going to start at 180 degrees here, which is 9 o'clock, and it's going to also go 90 degrees. And the last one is going to start at 270, which is 12 o'clock, and it's going to go 90 degrees. So now if this is accurate, I should have a full circle alternating colors, and I'm going to run it to double check that. So I click on reset. I've got my full circle here. I'm starting with my yellow that goes 0 to 90. Starting my red, it goes from 90 and it goes a 90 degree from there. My yellow here starts at 180 and goes 90. And then I start with my red one here at 270 and it goes 90. And you can see those, those different measurements inside here. Okay. Now, one other thing I should mention as you're drawing this particular um, target is that you've got these arcs that are gradually getting smaller until you get to the bullseye. You have to draw the largest ones first and work your way into the center. If you start in the center with the small bullseye and draw out, each one is going to cover up that last one that you made. So that your last one, if this were your last um, items that you're drawing, this these four right here, it would cover up everything underneath here. So I'm going to draw this first and then I'm going to be putting the smaller ones inside. So let's go back in here. I'm going to exit out of there. And we're going to copy this here, whole section. And we're going to be moving in a little bit. So the next one, these, this next little group is going to be 25 um, wide. So what we need to do 
uh, is we need to <clears throat> move these here in. So um, if we move this here over 25, it's going to be 75 for these. So let me go ahead and put a 75 here. And if I copy this, I can paste it over top. And you notice all of my start points now are at 75, 75. So it's gradually moved in on here. If I run it just like it is, you notice that it, it came in 25. It came down 25 from the top and it came in 25 on the right. But I didn't resize the width. It's still 400 by 400. So it's going off the target area. Because we came in 25 here, we have to shrink this down by 50 because it's going to be 25 to bring it back to the edge and then it's got to go in 25 from there. Same with the bottom. So these down here are going to become 350s now. So let me exit and I'm going to change these to 350s. Okay, I'll copy this one, paste it over top of these other 400s. So everything is 350 by 350 now. Still going to have the same arcs here, but we have to alternate these colors the other way now. So this is now going to become red. And this one's going to become red. And these other two are going to become yellow. Let's run it again. And when I click on reset, you notice that now I've got my smaller circle going in here, 25 in from the sides, and I have to shorten it up by 50 because I have to take off 25 from each side to get that inside. I also switched my colors now. Instead of going yellow, red, yellow, red, I'm going red, yellow, red, yellow. So I got red, yellow, red, yellow. Okay, now I'm going to do my next set, um, and I'm going to actually create the next ones, they're going to be 50 wide. I want them to be a little bit wider for these here. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and copy this again. So we just select it all, paste it in here. <clears throat> now for this particular one, we're going to alternate the other way. So let's go ahead and change this to yellow and this to yellow. And we're going to have red and red. Okay. Now we're going to be moving in 50. So this is going to be 125. So I'm going to change all of these to 125s. Okay. And these 350s now have to be twice that distance because I've got to, if I'm moving in by 50, I've got to shrink this up by 100 so it covers both sides. So I'm going to take these and put them as 250s. And I don't change anything over here. So let's go ahead and run it again. Make sure this is coming out right. And you see that I have a 25 ring, and then I have a 50 ring. This one's twice as wide. Now I'm going to go back to another 25 ring here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this, paste it, and we're going 25. So these are going to be 150s now. So let's go ahead and put this at 150. I'll copy it, paste it over top of these other ones. I'm trying to make these edits quick and easy. If you need to pause the video or back it up, feel free to do that. So I'm moving these 25s, which means I have to back these up 50. So these are going to be 200s now. So I'll change this first one, copy it, and I'll paste it over these other ones. No changes to my degrees over here. 
but I'm going to alternate these the other way now. So I'm going to flip this over to red, this one to red, and I will change these two other red ones to yellow. Okay, so yellow and yellow. Run it one more time. Make sure this is coming out right. Okay, so we've got a, a narrow band. We've got our 25 width band. We've got our 50 width band. We've got another 25 width band, and you notice that the colors are alternating as we go in. Okay, so the next one we need to do now is going to be our bullseye in here. So we're going to move this over 50. Okay, and we're going to put our last set in here that's going to be for our bullseye. So let's go back and do that. So I'll copy this here code, paste it below. And we're moving this over 50. So this is now going to be 200. And we're moving this 50. So this has got to go 100. So we're going to shrink this down to just 100. I'll put one in here, copy it, and I'll paste it over the other ones. Be careful not to get it confused with the first two that are at 200. Okay, so just double check your numbers. You should have the first two at 200, the second two at 100, okay, and then the last ones will be um, your actual um, dimensions for your arcs. Okay, I'm gonna um, also flip this. This will be yellow, red, yellow and red and we'll run it again make sure that the reset button is looking good for us okay so our bullseye is in the middle here we've got our alternating rings 25 50 25 50 and the one inside here which is going to be the remainder of that so this looks pretty good now the only other thing I would recommend is that we use black lines in here to kind of highlight and make this kind of stand out. And we can do that fairly easily. If we go back into our code, I'm gonna go up to the beginning of this um, fill area and I'm gonna go ahead and put fill, target. Okay, so that I know that all this code is for the fill target. And if I copy this here, I go over to my margin again and I'm just going to drag straight down so I select all these lines. And I paste them again. My top area is going to be for the fill. My bottom area is going to be for the outline of the target. Okay. Now for the outline, I also need to change the fill pie to draw pie. Okay. So I'm going to change this first one here to draw pie. And if I double click it and copy it, I can paste it over these other ones very quickly. You notice that I'll get an underline here telling me that I've got some problems and I'll fix that in just a second. Oops, I didn't want to delete that entire row. Okay, so we've got this uh, draw pie going in. And up at the very top, if you remember, we went ahead and defined a pin, a black pin. So what I'm going to do is copy that, and I'm going to replace this brush with that pin. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and put this pin in each one of these areas. Um, I was putting it in the wrong one. So let me back up real quick to get that out of there. Okay, let's go down here. This is where we need it in the outline area. So <clears throat> go ahead and paste that in. And in just a minute, we're going to try it out, make sure that that's working for us.
Okay, once we've got that in there, let's go ahead and run it. We're going to take a quick look here on reset. And you notice that with the outline, the black lines in here, it kind of separates that red and yellow, yellow a little bit and makes it a little bit um, stronger, better looking target for our user. Okay. All right, uh, next thing we need to do is that play button. So let's go back to the form for just a second. And as we look at the form, we've got the exit coded, we've got the reset coded. The only other coding in this project is gonna be in the play button. Nothing else is coded. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on play. And as we double click on play, we can go ahead and start putting in the coding. And for this particular one, we're going to need to define several local variables. Um, we're going to need that graphics object again. So let's go up and just copy that so we don't have to retype it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, paste it inside here. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to put in here, um, we need to define uh, four integers. So I'm going to go ahead and put dim x loc as integer. I'm going to dim y loc as an integer. And I'm going to also uh, dim an x temp as an integer. And dim a y temp as an integer. Okay. All right, now they're underlined in green. That's just telling you that you've got them defined, but they're not being used in the program. We're going to use those in just a minute. But uh, the main thing is that uh, we need an X loc and a Y loc for the locations of X and Y. So that's X location and Y location. We also need to have a temporary location for X and Y. So um, all of these are going to be integers. And that's the reason I defined them as integers in here. Okay. Um, now we're going to come down a line and we're going to, um, let's go ahead and uh, give total a value of 100 here. Actually, let's, let's leave total out for just a moment right now. Let's uh, set up a for loop. So I'm going to put in a for loop where I'm going to say for i is equal to 1. Okay, i equals 1 to 100. And if you press enter, you should automatically have it put in a next statement. Okay, now we're going to use that for loop there to randomly shoot um, 100 darts or throw 100 darts. Um, these are just random. You as a player really can't control them. It's kind of like playing a dice game or a game of war with cards. You, you, it's just the, you know, whatever luck of the draw or the hand that you have, um, we really can't control that. But you can see the animation effect as we do run this dart game. Um, underneath here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our x loc because we have to create a location for x and y, is going to be equal to some random number times the width of the form, so me dot width. Okay. We also need to do this for y, and this is going to be some random number times the height of the form. Okay. So once we've got that in there, uh, we need to also draw that um, area where the dart's actually hitting. If it's hitting the target or if it's um, um, not hitting the target, wherever it may be, we need to draw that. So we're going to put G dot fill ellipse. And we're going to use brushes. And I'm just going to use black. I recommend that you use the color of the background of your form. Okay, I've set mine for black, but if you have green or blue, set your your um, your brushes to that color. That way, if it doesn't hit the target, it doesn't look like it's um, shooting up your wall or something. Okay, it just only shows on the target. 
So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and put our x location. And we're going to subtract 5. And then our y location and subtract 5. And we're going to make these here so that they're 10 by 10. And we can resize those later if we need to, but that's probably a good um, size to use for this. Okay. All right, the next thing we need to do is create some temporary um, locations for x and y. So I'm going to use x temp is going to be equal to math.pow <clears throat> math.abs. So we need the absolute value of the location minus 250. Okay. And we need some similar coding for the y temp. And we're going to minus 250 again. And we're going to put 2 over here like this. Actually, we're going to do it the same way we did the other one. Okay, and then the last thing that we need inside of this for loop is an if statement. So I'm going to put if math and use the square root. Okay, so we have that for loop. Now, let me just explain this uh, briefly to you. We have a for loop that's going to be um, iterating 100 times. Each time it iterates, i increments by 1. The value of i is not actually being used for anything in this program, so you don't have to worry about the value of that. But we do need to have it loop from 1 to 100. As it's looping, each time it loops, it's going to create a new random location for x and y. And that's going to be based upon the size of the um, form, the width and the height. We do not want to have sizes that are off the form. And that's the reason we have to multiply it by the actual width, because we want it somewhere in that, uh, in that form area. The next one down below is going to actually draw that little, um, a little black circle where it's showing where the dart hit. So that's all that this one's doing. And then down below that, we're creating a temporary x and y here. Um, we want to find out if that location of x and y is on that circle, or as close to being on that circle as possible. And so that's what this is doing here. And then it's checking those values down here. And it just wants to find out, basically, if it's within that target. If it is, it wants to count it as a hit. If it's not, if this is not a true statement here, this if statement, then it won't count it as being a hit. So it is kind of doing what it needs to do to check to see if it hits that target. Now, the last thing we need to do is to um, get these uh, values updated. So we want to find out how many um, uh, misses we have. We have the hits because we're counting them right here. Our misses are going to be equal to 100 minus the number of hits, because we're basically throwing 100 darts. And if we've got 50 hits, then we know that we have 100 minus the hits is going to be the number of misses. Okay, So that's going to calculate our misses. And then we need to update those labels again. So LBL hits dot text is going to be equal to hits dot to string and our LBL misses dot text is going to be equal to our misses dot to string okay so that should update um, our plays on there now I'm going to run this thing and just make sure that it's working for us so I click on play I can hit reset and it just kind of clears everything off and it draws our target. 
I hit play and you notice that it's given me um, the number of hits. I hit 45 times. If I count each of these dots, there should be 45 on here. And it's telling me that I missed 55 times. So somewhere out in this black area, out in space, um, there's some targets that were hit. Now it's probably counting these ones like this because I, I wrote the formula so that it would include anything that hit the target. So it should be pretty accurate if you counted all these. If I click on reset, it should clear it off, give me a new target. I click on play, it plays again. If I wanted to play multiple rounds, okay, um, it will do that for you too. So basically, um, it looks like it's working okay. Try it out and uh, see how it's working for you. Well, thanks for joining me on this video. Uh, you take care and have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.